India, a country swathed in mystery. unveils a land exploding with life. Populated by giants and predators. A place of beauty, rarity, conflict, and vulnerable new life. All wrapped up in a land of extremes. January. It's still cool, but summer temperatures will eventually exceed 38 degrees. For now, an early morning mist cloaks a primordial world of forests, hills, rivers and pools. In a remote clearing, a 30-year-old Indian elephant, heavy with milk, guards her newborn calf. Only hours old, she was born under the cover of darkness. The females of the herd gather to witness her first tentative steps. They will stop at nothing to protect her. Even with their vigilance, she faces six months of drought, fire and flood. And two of the most extraordinary predators, the Bengal tiger and the king cobra. She's been born into an ancient land where civilizations lie one on another back into the mists of prehistory. India is home to over a billion people, almost one fifth of the world's population, living on only 2% of the Earth's surface. Congestion, madding crowds, religious devotion. All on an epic scale. But India still has a wild side. Secreted away in the state of Assam, 160 kilometers south of the Himalayas, live the last herds of giant grazers. Indian elephants, the largest land animal in Asia. the endangered one-horned rhinoceros, a survivor of 37 million years of evolution. The Indian wild buffalo, a volatile temper makes it one of the most dangerous animals anywhere. 
Their story begins over 6,000 meters up in the Himalayas. This is the source of one of Asia's great rivers, the Brahmaputra. Fed by billions of drops of melting ice, it winds its way across Tibet into India, where its nutrient-rich waters create grasslands that range over an area larger than California. These are India's wild plains. A savanna more African than Asian. A place of contrast and variety. The early morning sun warms the family of smooth-coated otters. These are the largest otters in Asia. This group is made up of a breeding pair and their young from last year. Standing two meters tall and weighing 2,000 kilograms, the Indian rhino is a formidable beast. These plains are the only place in the world where rhino and otter exist together. Two very different creatures, both beautifully adapted to their environment. <laughs> Leaving the rhinos behind, our otter family swim into a beal where they begin to hunt. Thick, soft, insulating fur keeps them dry and warm. Nostrils and ears close when diving. Powerful tails propel these perfectly evolved hunters. Special muscles make the lenses in their eyes more spherical, improving their underwater vision. Herding fish into the shallows, the group pick them off. Waters teeming with catfish keep the family fed and playful. The rich variety of environments has led to rich diversity of bird species, each with its own unique way of feeding. From a distance, 
A palace's fish eagle watches and waits. It can see prey from over two kilometers away. Closer to the action, an egret shuffles through the shallows, spooking fish and frogs. A vice-like grip prevents the fish wriggling free from the eagle's talons. Close by, a flock of cormorants employ otter-like fishing tactics. Surprisingly for aquatic birds, cormorant feathers are not waterproof and need regular drying. They don't have external nostrils, so must breathe through their open mouths. After such energetic feeding, they cool off by flapping their throats. Having exhausted this body of water, the team moves off to fish elsewhere. There are countless beals, small lakes, dotted across the plains, each surrounded by dense tropical forest. A refuge for some. killing ground for others. Prime territory for ambush specialists. And home to the world's largest venomous snake. The King Cobra's Latin name, Ophiophagus, means snake eater. It eats almost nothing else. consuming them head first in one long, slow, methodical mouthful. Just as the beals are rich in birds, the forests are a paradise for insects. Stainer bugs insert long straw like mouthparts into fruit and suck out all the juice. Beyond the forest shade, the plains are baking hot. It's 32 degrees and rising. Indian elephants can eat 130 kilograms of vegetation every day. 
They have a prehensile lip at the end of the trunk for grasping. The herd keeps moving, and our month-old calf must keep up. The deep, sun-baked tracks of last year's wet season make it tough going for her. They can drink 100 litres of water every day just to survive. A buffalo matriarch leads her clan to water along corridors created by generations of elephants. On the outskirts of the herd lurks a colossal male. These leviathans weigh over a ton and are armed with the biggest horns of any animal on Earth. Grazers are rarely alone at waterholes. The herd gathers around the calf. This rhino sniffs the air. Danger. The large male tiger alarms even the mightiest of beasts. Tigers will attack and kill young elephants. With this mobile fortress, the calf is safe for now. However, there is one threat out here that even her aunties can't protect her from. fuels a fire. It spreads rapidly through the tall elephant grass. Embers carry on the wind. New fires spring up all around. Crisis for some, opportunity for others. Birds gather around the fringes to feed on insects and small creatures flushed out by the flames.
Our calf has escaped, but the struggles for survival never end. The plains resemble a barren wasteland. But almost magically, the land regenerates. Red silk cotton trees burst into life, their large flowers dominating the landscape and attracting pollinators from kilometers around. A clearly successful strategy, bringing salvation to smaller species while keeping their prizes beyond the reach of the larger grazers. For the next two months, daytime temperatures will reach 35 degrees. Excellent for cold-blooded creatures that bask, converting the sun's rays into energy. Temperature regulation is everything, and during the hottest part of the day, this Indian monitor and rock python are forced to hide away in the shade. The Brahmaputra River is now perilously low. But at nearly 3,000 kilometers in length and three kilometers wide, it's still an impenetrable barrier for most animals. Many species on one bank have never been seen or heard on the other. Restricted to the south bank, the Hulok gibbon is India's only ape. 30 meters up in the treetops, their hook-like hands and incredible strength propel them through the trees with leaps of over six meters. Females are brown and the males black. With only 5,000 left alive, this exhilarating sight is now rarely seen. side of the river, India's most endangered monkey, the golden langur. They're also confined to a life in the trees, but their movement could hardly be more different to that of the gibbons, using all four legs and their long tail for balance. The Brahmaputra ensures that the Hulok and the Golden Langur will never meet. On the forest floor, an untidy pile of sticks is home to one of India's rarest mammals. The world's smallest pig, until recently thought extinct. They spend their days rooting for nuts and insects.
Newborn piglets weigh less than 200 grams, about the size of an apple. They're perfect prey for many of the plane's many predators. Indian rock pythons can weigh 90 kilograms and grow to five meters long, or nine pygmy hogs nose to tail. They hunt by stealth. Parental grunts keep the piglets close. It doesn't pay to fall behind. Pythons seize the head and kill by constriction. The lower jaw works its way over the body, swallowing the prey whole. The summer grinds on. The silk cotton's flowers that once fed the climbers and perches now die and fall to earth. Like a scene from a bygone era, elephant herds gather by a beal. But they're not here just to drink. A bull is in must and has detected the scent of a receptive female. This is an unpredictable time of heightened sexual tension. Testosterone levels rise to 60 times more. He smells the ground, searching for the scent of the right female to mate with. Then moves through the herd. It's now that placid elephants can turn violent and even kill. The calves need to be alert. Big bull elephants can weigh six tons, almost twice that of a female. Eventually, the herd moves to the safety of a beal. Getting about in the water proves just as difficult as it was on land. The young calf quickly gets herself into trouble. And then out again.
Even young elephants can swim using their trunks as snorkels. Afterwards, reassurance is given by suckling. Another exhausted newborn is tenderly helped to its feet. At the end of a long, hot, stressful day, the older calves are in high spirits, unaware of the dangers the undergrowth could hold. Not so the females, who are taking no chances. Even a harmless family of wild pigs are driven off. Raising calves within a herd increases their survival chances. Unlike elephants, rhinos don't have an extended family and rear their young alone. This rhino has just given birth. They are alone and the calf is vulnerable. The bond between rhino mother and calf lasts four long years. She will need all of her wits about her to keep her safe. They have very poor vision with small eyes positioned on the side of the head as well as their incredible sense of smell, they have acute hearing. They scan the airwaves for danger. A troop of rhesus macaques descend to feed on plants made available by the shrinking pools. The young are not aware of dangers posed by being on the ground. The python would make a quick meal of a macaque. they quickly return to the canopy. Up here is one especially bountiful food source. Figs fruit around the year and form a major part of their diet. There are close to 1,000 different species of fig in the world. Each has its own symbiotic relationship with its own species of tiny wasp that has evolved over the last 80 million years. Female wasps enter the fig and lay their eggs through a long ovipositor. As they move, they brush against the flowers 
pollinating the fruit. After laying their eggs, they die. And the fig absorbs the female, its task complete. In some forests, up to 70% of the animals rely on figs. They target the ripest fruits. Then hornbills disperse seeds across 40 square kilometers of plains. With the land baked hard and the grass is now in short supply, the elephants feed on rafts of water hyacinth, fastidiously cleaning the roots first. For our calf, it's another survival lesson. The rhino makes the most of a rich source of food. They produce prodigious piles of dung, which they deposit in latrines to mark their territories. Nothing goes to waste on the plains. Butterflies ingest the minerals. Seeds germinate and beetles nibble at the fresh new shoots. But hidden deep in the dung is the best adapted of all the dung pile's inhabitants. beetles create hundreds of dung balls, which they bury to feed on later. This may look speeded up, but this is real time for the industrious dung beetle. The dung balls act as grow bags, and any seeds not eaten by the beetles will germinate into new plants. The most industrious recyclers on the plains have to be the termites. There are maybe 100,000 living in this one colony. Workers gather mud from deep underground and regurgitate it to build the walls of their mound. They clear the plains of dead wood, turn it back into nutrients which are absorbed back into the soil. The riverbed resembles a desert. It has not rained since November. The plains bake.
The rhino find comfort wallowing in thick mud. Their armor-plated hide is in fact quite sensitive and in certain places soft. The mud provides relief from biting insects, keeps their skin in good condition and protects them from the sun's punishing rays. Pressure mounts for wallowing space and tensions rise. Despite the heat of the day, sub-adult rhinos quarrel, biting rather than using their horns. The adults are fully equipped and battle is fierce. Wounded and half-blind, the defeated rhino heads off to recover. Accompanied as ever by minor birds, which clean up festering wounds and remove bits of loose skin and ticks. For some, the stresses of life on the plains is too much. The scavengers clean up. At the peak of the summer, there is still food if you know where to look for it. An army of black ants invade the nest of a much larger ant species. They kill and steal all they can carry including their rival's larvae. Temperatures continue to climb. The clouds build. The monsoon arrives. Storm clouds build to 16 kilometers tall and can contain 4 million tons of water, equal to 10,000 Boeing 747s. And it's all about to fall on the parched plains. Once shrinking pools begin filling. This will last for three months, leading to an explosion of new life. Fish return, restocking the beans. Blade hooves of the highly adapted endemic swamp deer allow them to negotiate the thickest mud. But although this water brings relief in the short term, the land requires food to continue its existence.
glacial meltwaters from the Himalayas mix with the monsoon rains. The Brahmaputra River bursts its banks and floods an area of 30,000 square kilometers, the size of Belgium. So begins the final cycle. Barren plains change into wetlands. Dry land becomes scarce. The exodus starts. Marooned concentrations of prey species makes life easier for predators. The rhino and her calf leave the banks of the Brahmaputra, joining the elephants to find sanctuary in the surrounding hills. Our young elephant calf has survived the ravages of her first long, hot, dry season, only to be forced away by the river that now covers the land. But what at first appears to be destruction is actually creation. Without this flood cycle, such productive plains could not exist. The nutrients brought down from the mountains spread across the land, bringing fertility and fecundity to the plains. As soon as the waters recede, the grazers will return to an abundance of new growth. On a land heaving with human life, there are still places where giants are at one with their world. The Brahmaputra River has created an exceptional place of astonishing richness, unique to India and to the Earth. <laughs> 